The South Pole. Until 1912, no person had stood at the South Geographical Pole, located near the centre of Antarctica. To reach this point, it was necessary to sail to the Antarctic continent by specially toughened ships. Once there, the men had to set up sturdy cabins that would be their home for a year or more. Through the months, they would prepare equipment and distribute food provisions along the proposed route to support a team of men on a return journey to the South Geographic Pole. In 1910, a British team set out from England both to take on this challenge and to carry out extensive scientific exploration. The return polar journey of 800 miles each way to the pole would be a mammoth undertaking. With months of tortuous physical effort, the men hauling their own sledges in extreme cold and deprivation. At the end of their first winter, with little or no chance of any rescue, or even communication with the outside world, these five men, Robert Falcon Scott, the leader, Edward Wilson, Birdie Bowers, Titus Oates, and Edgar Evans, with initial support from other expedition members, commenced towards the South Pole, still hundreds of miles away. Reaching the Pole, they found evidence that a Norwegian, Roald Amundsen, and his team having set out from a base further around the continent, had forestalled them, leaving his country's flag, a tent and a note to Scott. Bitterly disappointed, the five exhausted men, battling against the approaching winter, had the daunting task to reach their depots and safety of their coastal base. Weeks later, worn out, emaciated, having run out of food and with no fuel for their stoves, they died of starvation and the extreme cold. At that time in 1912, there were no radios, no satellite navigation, no maps, no lightweight or high-tech equipment, no aeroplanes, and absolutely no chance of rescue should it be needed. In today's feats of endurance, even in the most inaccessible parts of the world, there is a good chance of summoning help. This tragic demise of Scott's team stirred the British nation. Their determination against impossible odds was taken as an example of the British stoicism of camaraderie and dedication. My name is Jeff Summers. I live in the north of England. I have travelled around 14,000 miles in the polar regions, several times to both the North and the South Poles, using husky dogs to pull the sleds, other times using kites to pull me, or I would be pulling my own supplies. As with most modern expeditions, many a time I have been in danger of mishap, but have always known that I could get help from the outside world, be it also to bring supplies or equipment. No one has yet been able to replicate Scott's journey. He had no chance of rescue. He must succeed or he will die. He left a legacy of determination, resilience and leadership. Before commencement of his trek, the team member Edward Wilson wrote a short poem that is recited here by his great nephew, David Wilson. The Barrier Silence the silence was deep with the breath like sleep as our sledge runners slid on the snow and the fateful fall of our fur-clad feet struck mute like a silent blow on a questioning hush as the settling crust shrank shivering over the flow and the sledge in its track sent a whisper back which was lost in a white fog bow. And this was the thought that the silence wrought as it scorched and froze us through, though secrets hidden are all forbidden, till God means man to know. We might be the men God meant should know, the heart of the barrier snow. In the heat of the sun and the glow, and the glare from the glistening flow, as it scorched and froze us through and through, with the bite of the drifting snow.